Let me live. All right, three, two, night round. Hi, and welcome to Catrin Figures. So we are still testing some of our new equipment, but I thought I would hop on to do a little bit of a quick review and a little bit of a rundown of two really great indie books that you may or may not have noticed just came out. I personally love both of them. So first off, we're going to be talking about The Belfry, and second, we will be talking about The Old Guard. So, both from Image Comics, The Belfry takes place with a plane crash, and all of the passengers inside the plane are very disoriented, and everyone seems to have survived, including the pilot, who unfortunately has a very large branch stuck within his eye. And no one really knows what's going on. They're trying to escape this jungle. They're trying to get help for the rest of the individuals who were in the crash. And they don't understand how they crashed or why they crashed. Even the pilot himself doesn't know how he landed the plane safely. And then they start getting attacked by these crazed, flying vampire creatures. Uh, the best way to describe it is literally if a bat and a human was a hybrid. So this is apparently Hardman's idea of what a vampire should be like. I gotta tell you, I love the art throughout. There's just something so beautiful about the violence and all the gore in this, but there's also almost like an angelic dance pose with a lot of these creatures. Like we go from the creature slamming down on top of the plane to ripping out or tearing into a guy's throat. And then she almost strikes a pose to go flying back up into the sky. And I mean, I kind of love it. We don't know exactly what's going on or where this plane was going, why it crashed. But what we do know is that everyone's screwed. So each individual member who has survived this plane crash is now getting attacked by all these various flying bat human creatures. And it's, it's very guttural that the attack, the way that even, the way that even the text is done is just crazy. And I kind of love it. it. It looks a lot like chalk art to me. Like if, if you've ever seen the medium of chalk done, that's honestly what it looks like. It's, it's very strong for me. I really enjoy it. And then for some reason, after they're attacked by these creatures, they're taken to this underground cave-like system. However, they're attacked. They have all their clothes on until they end up in the cave system. And for some reason, they're all naked. I, I, I guess Hardman really wanted a reason to, to draw a bunch of naked people. So they get into this cave system and a lot of the passengers who have been attacked start getting really sick. And they, they don't know what's going on. They don't know if they're gonna die. They don't know if these creatures are gonna come back and finish them all off. It's really horrible until a man behind, behind these bars starts talking to them. And he's telling them that he hopes that some of them don't turn because he really misses a good conversation. So he, fe he feeds them by throwing out a bunch of fish heads and guts towards them. And of course, the humans are all, they're all the passengers are screaming for him to let them out, to save them from those creatures. That's when some of the passengers start to turn into these very same bat creatures and they start to fly out of the cave. 
And once a number of them have actually turned, that's when one of the very same bat creatures and the man that they spoke to earlier open the bars of the cage and start to walk in. And he's saying he's happy that some of them didn't turn. Only the next part's gonna be kind of painful. But it's really not that bad, and it has to happen because they didn't turn. So next thing you know, he's holding each of these individuals so the bat creature can stake their eyes out. And we get to one of the main characters in this book. He's about ready to get his eye stabbed out by this creature. And I guess the sheer fear and all of the adrenaline that he was, that's clearly pumped through his body at this point in time, hits and he transforms into a bat creature like so many of the other ones. And you just see it. I mean, this is spectacular. Not only is it beautiful, but I mean, it doesn't have to be this refined look at it. This, this to me is a lot like classic horror. And I'm really sad because this is a one shot. We're not going to get, or at least not anytime soon, we're not going to get any more information, any background story, any history associated with this or attached to it. Just all we know is that this originated from a couple sketches that Hardman did, including this one, which this is gorgeous. And he just went through and did a number of refined sketches and he didn't even know what the story was going to be. But I don't know. If you're a fan of horror, if you love 30 Days of Night, if you just want to see a really great one-shot comic that isn't really tough to get into, there's not a whole lot of a backstory or anything, I would definitely say pick up The Belfry. I thought it was beautiful. I enjoyed it. It's a quick read. It's a fun read. I wish there was more, but it is a one shot. I, I felt like it was a really good pickup. So pick it up if you haven't already. I would definitely suggest it. So next on the agenda is from, also from Image Comics, and that is The Old Guard. And this is a new Greg Rucka book. So the Old Guard, I wasn't really sure what I was getting into when I first read it. I just knew it was a Greg Rucka book and it was a brand new image book. So I knew I was going to give it at least a chance with the one shot. So we open into of soldiers in the life of warriors. And this is all told through a female narrative perspective. And she's talking about how many times she's gone through this, all of the different lives that she's lived. And the fact that everything, it's just going through the motions. It's just killing time. And she's sick of it. You know, she sleeps around, she kills, she does what she does and it is who she is. So getting right on into it, we find out that she is one of a small team of individuals and we find out she's a boss and I kind of love her. She really, she doesn't take shit from anyone. She's not afraid of anyone. She's an immortal and she's cool with it. So we find out that they have a job, that a number of girls have been taken from a school in another country and it's up to them to go and save them from this group. So they take the job because it's kids. Of course, they're still going to bill 
their contract, but uh, they're taking the job because it's kids. We find out a bit more that they don't like to take the same, they don't like to take jobs from the same customers. They like to go as low profile as possible. They're trying to stay off any major radars. And as it goes on, there's another side story with a woman in Afghanistan. And she's in the armed forces. She's trying to look for a dangerous individual. And we find out that uh, this dangerous individual is hiding behind a bunch of women. So she and her team go in to try to take him. And yeah, he's gonna die. They were supposed to take him alive and he is going to bleed out. So she's doing everything she can to try to keep him alive. And that's when he pulls a knife on her and he slits her throat. And it all, it's almost like there's nothing the rest of her team can do. They can't get to her quick enough. Her throat's been slit. She bleeds out in one of her, in one of her comrades' arms. And you would think that that is going to be the end of this woman. You would think. So, going right on, we get to see the South Sudan, and we get to see the original group that we saw earlier. They're all geared up. They're ready to go in. They're ready to go get those girls and take down the guys. We find out out of the hostages, 17 were taken. The oldest of the girls is 13 years old and the youngest is eight. One of the men says, we're getting them all out. So they go in, loaded, armed, ready to go. And I gotta tell you, I love the art throughout this. It, it, it's very dynamic. I love the use of color. It feels, it feels very much like an action film. And it's very dynamic throughout. So they go in, they take down every armed guard that they need to. We get to see they're shot up, just shot to hell. And typically all of these wounds would kill someone. But then we get to see this great panel right here where they're healing through all of these wounds. And then they decide it's their turn. So they open fire on all of the terrorist individuals who've taken all these girls. And it's almost too simple for them. It really is. So once they've taken out all of the armed individuals, they find out there's a camera set up and it's monitored everything they've done. Everything they've done has just been recorded. So of course, woman, she takes it off its peg, she takes off all the wires, and she throws it at another one of the group and tells them, destroy it, get rid of any of the footage, do what you have to. And he tells them, it's feeding somewhere else. It was an external link. He can't just destroy it. It was uploading elsewhere. And it looks like they've been set up because there's no signs of any girls here. There's no sign of anyone else here. It's empty. It's just, it's all too perfect. So they've been set up and they don't know who set them up, but they do know that they know their secret now. So getting right back on into Afghanistan, we're outside of a military hospital and two individuals are discussing the injuries that were sustained. And they're talking about how she died. She died in her arms. She doesn't understand. And they're saying, in the heat of battle, 
with all that blood, you can you could exaggerate an injury. You could honestly believe that something is far worse than what it actually is. Also, the mixture between his blood and hers, it could have just been exaggerated. And she's saying, you don't understand. She died in my arms. She watched her die. And then we get to see the very same woman that had her throat slit earlier on in the day is getting up out of bed and she's fine. Doesn't even look like there's a scar or anything, honestly. So the old guard part two, the old guard is revealed, a new immortal is discovered, things go sideways fast. So that's gonna be available in March. I gotta tell you, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, I liked both of these comics for, for very different reasons. I felt like the art was beautiful on this one. The art was very dynamic in this one, but for very different reasons. I loved the use of color in the old guard. I, I want more answers from the old guard, and I'm really hoping I get that. Greg Greca has been knocking it out with Wonder Woman, and I gotta tell you, for a first issue, I thought this was pretty fantastic. So, give me a like if you like this video. Um, Minos Comics Man says yay for live chats, lol. Yeah, Blaster I know. Blaster Stashit says what's up. Hi, Blaster Stashit. This is just gonna be, this is just kind of a quick little video. Uh, like I said earlier on, if you didn't catch it, we're testing some new equipment here. So we're seeing how the live streaming works for our channel. You tell me to turn on the FPS, which I don't know how to do that yet. Okay, well, we're learning. <laughs> we're learning here on Cat Run Figures, and I don't know. I'm enjoying it. So uh, anything else in the chat before we go? Anything real quick you guys want to talk about? Foster sister says, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll definitely be in the Blasted or Stash It chat tonight. Really excited about that show. Uh, we also have an unboxing that we're probably going to be doing later on. I actually got my auction winnings from Blasted or Stash It. So, from Big Bear. Yeah, it's from Big Bear, but it's the Blaster Stash It off auction so yeah. really excited for that i'm going to be doing an unboxing for that later on tonight so anything else before we yeah, before we call it a night just or before we call it before the video yeah. thanks for dropping stuff baby don't, don't worry nothing terrible <laughs> fell. it was just a pop it's just a pop it's all good <laughs> not a soda like a pop figure <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we're going to call it for this episode. And uh, like I said, we're still figuring things out. I just really wanted to talk about these two comics because I love them both. And I wasn't really sure who at all had been reading them or who at all was really interested for the one. But two fantastic books. If you didn't pick them up, I would definitely suggest picking them up if you liked this at all. If you liked either concept, I think it's worth it. Also, you know, brand new image book. You can't really go wrong with a brand new image book. So yeah, that's it for uh, this video of Catherine Figures. Uh, I will be on later tonight with a couple things. So look out for that. Um, yeah. Bye, guys. Yeah, she'll definitely be hitting up the chats on Blaster Stash It tonight. Yeah, we're we're probably both going to be watching Blaster Stash It later on here in a little bit. So, yeah, I really can't wait for that. Just amazingness. Well, sweet. I have a half hour. I gotta go shower. <laughs> Bye.